Thanks for everyone here with me live. And thank you for each and every one of you joining for the replay. Check out the streets of Jerusalem. All right, folks, this is very simple. Here, I'll say hello to you. Hello, this is Zachary. Hello, everybody, for joining. So, here's the deal. Here. Here is the deal. Last week, hello, Jax. Good afternoon, John West. John is a great follower. John, you follow me everywhere, and I appreciate it. Thank you so much for wanting to listen and, and hear my side of everything. Hello, Helena. All right, so I told you guys, very busy here. What are you busy with, Jax? Shalom M. N. Dovik video. Shalom Brooks. Hello, Elliot. Shalom Janet. Working. Got it, got it. All right, keep on working. I am uh, heading out of the office and uh, going home. Stand with Israel. Thank you, Patty. Going home to spend some time with the kids and the family. We're in the middle of preparation for the Passover holiday. Yes, exactly. Joel, we are involved in getting ready for the Passover. Shalom from New York City. Thank you for all you do. Thank you, Shia. I appreciate that. Hello, Ruth Here we go. We have a here. Aria Bromwitz, uh, Fleischer on the radio every day. You listen to them. Amazing. God bless. Thank you, Helena. What time is it there? It's like 3.30. When does Passover start? Next week. Good morning from Chicago. You love Israel. Okay. I'll watch you on catch but you got it, Jax. I don't walk into a <laughs> Thanks, Zachary. All right, so fuck, here we go. Shalom, New Caledonia. I don't even know where New Caledonia is. Where is that? Good morning, Alabama. So last week, um, I was on the Jay Sekulow Sokol show, the radio show, remember? And I did a scope. Hello, Blogart. I did a scope about how the Obama administration's latest strong-arm tactic against Israel, good morning, Ohio, that the Obama administration's latest strong, oh, it's a French island near Australia. Oh my God, sounds beautiful. I have to go visit one day. Hello, Ohio, thank you. Like Ob last week, Obama, good Erev Shabbos. Hey, Big Ben, Shabbat Shalom, I heard you're awesome. Thank you, Patty. No, Obama, no good. You were great. Wish you had more time. Yeah, me too. Thanks, Love 425. You agree on Jay. Thank you. So I was saying, so I had a, I had a uh, scope last week basically explaining why Obama's plan to, to strong arm the United Nations and withhold the, U, U, the USA's veto in the United Nations Security Council would backfire and be bad. Hello, Russia. Yes, Obama and his PC products. Heard you on Jay. Amazing, Janet. All these people heard me on Jay. That's fabulous. Thank you, folks. So, first of all, I have a good news update. Ready? Here's the good news update. Last week, all the headlines near Old Caledonia, okay. <laughs> Last week, all the headlines were how Obama was going to be pressuring Israel and withholding the United States veto in the UN Security Council. All the headlines, right? Again, the Palestinian Authority and France were planning on bringing anti-Israel resolutions to the Security Council. Any, an any resolution brought to the Security Council becomes an international law that can be enforced by the international community. So it is the one place that is really, really dangerous. So if an anti-Israel resolution is passed, which basically says that Israel has to create a border and expel Jews from their homes, and give that land to Arab terrorists, then the international community can then bring in NATO forces or, or United Nations forces to do that. So it's very, very dangerous. Um, so, and he was planning, well, he was talking about planning on doing that, withholding the US veto. Now, folks, let me give you some information about the Security Council. The Security Council has five permanent members. They are the United States, France, Britain, Russia, and China. Those are five permanent members. Only those five permanent members have a veto power. All the other rotating membership, all the other rotating membership don't, oh, don't have veto power. There's crap on social media blaming. Eh, it's crazy. 
Sorry, I'm getting of earthquakes. I was snapping pictures of that. Okay. Uh. So, um, and the only one who consistently vetoes any anti-Israel resolutions are the United States. So here's the deal. I have a good news, but there's a caveat. Having to block a lot of users. Thanks, Shia. Here's supposed to go back to be with us. It was 1864. It's very good law. 425. So the good news is, whoa, the good news is that today's headline was the Obama administration said, no, they are not going to withhold the veto in the Security Council. So whatever anti-Israel resolution they're going to be bringing, according to what the Obama administration is saying now, they will veto it. That is the good news. That is the good news. However, let me tell you something. A U.S. president never does anything like that. Never, on the one hand, talk about pressuring Israel and then deciding to withhold that pressure without paying a price. It's called blackmail, all right? It's basically a tool that every U.S. administration has to blackmail Israel. They always, they always say in backroom channels, none of this really goes public, that if you don't do X, Y, or Z, we will withhold our veto. Obama is not the first U.S. president to do that. So you could basically be sure that with today's headline being that Obama will not withhold the U.S. veto in the anti-Israel resolution at the Security Council, that he basically made Israel pay a price, which we don't know what those, what those, what the price is, but I'm sure there is a price. But still, the good news is, the United States will be, at least as right now, planning on vetoing any anti-Israel resolution brought at the Security Council, which could be devastating. Now, I'm gonna go take you back to my last scope on this issue, folks, because I was telling you how when I was a, a graduate student, Yes, he is not the voice of the people, totally. UN, United Nincompoops, yes. Israel understands all the U.S. don't stand. We, yes, Israelis understand the Israeli people have feel a close connection to the American people. Our value systems are very similar. We totally know that Obama does not re represent the Israeli people. Uh, yes, he's doing a lot of bad things. He wants to finish with a bang. And, you know, it's like a, it's like a wounded... Um, it's like a, a lion in, in the corner or, or any animal in the corner. They'll just go crazy to, to, to save themselves. So here at the end of his lame duck presidency, he's just going nuts and doing what he can do. You miss Israel very much. Very, you are welcome here to come visit. Check out Jerusalem, folks. This is Jerusalem. Beautiful Jerusalem. Beautiful Jerusalem. Don't judge us, player. More. No, we're not judging you. No worries. We're not judging you because you're president. A people is not judged by its leader. In any case, so last week, folks, uh, you got it, Patty. So last week, I did a scope expressing how I was a graduate student at Columbia University in New York City during the Camp David Accords in 2000. You want to go to Yeshiva? Awesome. Come to Israel to Yeshiva. Afraid the end of it will not be the end of his tyranny. <laughs> there might be something to that, Clove. You got it. Heard he may heard, yeah, that's that would be disastrous. But the United Nations is a disaster any case. Whoa. That was silly. That was silly. So uh Zog is watching you. What do you think if Trump will be president? Good question. I have no clue. I'm not talking I have no clue about Trump right now. You wanna eat falafel? Come over here, you'll eat falafel. So I was saying before Yes, the UN, just in a one sentence, the United Nations, because every country has a vote, since you have blocks of countries that are dictatorships and tyrannies, they are able to get majorities of votes to ensure that true human rights abuses taking place in their own countries are not dealt with. That is why Israel, the only democratic country in the Middle East, is has bad resolutions voted against it time after time because that's the way that the true tyrannies of the world and the true human rights abusers deflect attention from their own countries. They always vote positive reports of their human rights states, but you're talking about human rights abusing countries. So it's horrible. So it's like uh, the cat looking over the, uh, looking, um, looking, trying to protect the milk. That's the United Nations. You have tyrannies looking out over human rights, but they themselves are human rights abusers. It's crazy. 
any case, so I was saying how when I was a graduate student in 2000 at Columbia, and I was taking conflict resolution courses, right? And the professor was saying the Camp David Accords, perfect, there's gonna be peace between Israel and the Arabs, right? The Camp David Accords, Clinton was having talks between Arafat and Prime Minister uh, uh, Ehud Barak, and he was saying that, oh, there's gonna be peace. And when I went up to the conflict resolution professor, I said, you're wrong, there won't be peace, and I'll tell you why. And this is what I spoke about last week on The Scope. When the Western world, when Europeans and Americans come to try to use their conflict resolution theories that this professor was teaching me, right? That you try to figure out what your joint is, in each one puts down their interests, and then based on your interests and your interests, then you try to talk and figure things out. And then you can, and you make compromises. There you go, that's conflict resolution 101. I said, but, you also taught that if you're going to a foreign country, you have to know the culture of that foreign country. For instance, I don't know if you know that. <laughs> I don't know if you know this, folks. Obviously, anyone in the Western world, in, in, our, in Western culture, America for sure, and Israel as well, when you look into someone, uh, someone's eyes, right? Just think about it, communicating. When you look into someone's eyes, that shows trust. That shows a straightforward level of communication. You want to be able to talk to someone. You want to be able to make a deal with someone who looks into your eyes. In Western culture, if someone's not able to look into your eyes, that's not necessarily someone you want to make a deal with because you feel uncomfortable around them. Well, there's something wrong if someone can't look at you in your eyes. That is a Western cultural value. Now, let's go to some countries in Asia. In some countries in Asia, believe it or not, the culture is 100% different. Looking in someone's eyes is insulting. The only way you have respect for someone is if you do not look into their eyes. Yeah, I'm not walking into the pole. There's the pole. Okay? So again, Western culture, looking into your eyes shows a level of trust. In some Asian cultures, looking into someone's eyes is insulting. So here you're an American, or a British, or a French, and you go to an Asian country where they have the value where looking into your eyes is insulting, and you want to make a deal with them, and they're not looking into your eyes, what are you going to conclude? You're going to conclude that they're not people you should be making a deal with, because your cultural values are different. You have to understand the differences in your culture in order to be able to make deals, in order to be able to communicate. It's that simple. And I said the reason the Camp David Accords back in 2000 were going to fail, which they did, is because once again, time after time, the Western world keeps on bringing its own cultural values to a, ta to a conflict resolution table in the Middle East that has a totally different culture. And here's the culture of the Middle East, folks. The Arab Muslim culture of the Middle East is a tribal culture. It's very simple. It's a tribal culture. You're talking about a desert region. For generations, these Arab Muslim tribes had to survive in a desert where there's very, very little natural resources. So how do you survive in a desert with little natural resources, folks? By defeating the other people who have the resources that you want. It is a power culture. It is a violent culture. Now, that's not something you could diss away. That's something that you can ignore. You could say, maybe you won't agree with it, maybe you don't like it, but you can't Ignore it. And if you want to come to the region to preach peace, then you have to come with a plan that understands the different cultural perspectives of the region. When America and the United Nations and Europe come to our region, the Middle East, and they say, hey, you will be able to make peace, Israel, by giving up your homeland and giving it to aggressors who use horrible terrorism. How do you think that is interpreted in the Arab Muslim culture? That's interpreted as weakness. Because in when you're dealing with a culture of power, you don't give up. Giving up is a sign of weakness. The only way there will be peace in the Middle East is when the Western world acknowledges 
the culture of the Arab Muslim Middle East, which is power and violence, and them only understanding that violence is, does not pay if you can defeat them. But the second they show weakness, the second anyone shows weakness, that is when the power culture kicks in with their violence to take over and do their damage. So no peace talks will ever, ever succeed in this region. You want to know when peace is going to happen? Peace is going to happen when the world stands up side by side with Israel to allow Israel to be invincible so that the Arab Muslims know that they will be utterly defeated if they lift a finger against Israel. Now, do you want to know how to save your cultures? How to save freedom in your countries? In Europe, in America, in Canada, in Australia? It's by ensuring that the radical Muslims who are growing and spreading in the Western world understand that they will be put down if they try to do anything illegal or wrong in your countries. But so long as Western democratic cultures allow radical Muslims to grow and fester and develop their radical Islamic jihadist agenda in your countries, you should be scared because they will grow and there is nothing stopping them from growing. And I will say this like I always say, one of the biggest, one of the biggest uh, victims of the growth of this radical Islamic terrorism in Western countries are those Muslims who wanted to escape the radical Islam of the Middle East. There are some Muslims that moved to America, Australia, and Europe in order to escape it so they can live in modern societies. And what your leaders don't understand, right, La 425, 100%. There's no other against the Iranian threat, be careful, thanks for that. Totally. So what your leaders have to understand is by them aiding and abetting the radical Muslims to fester and grow in your countries, the main victims won't only be you, but are going to be the other Muslims that also live in your midst who want to live in freedom, free of the horrible intolerance and terror of the radical Muslims around us. That is the truth, folks. The only way to have peace is understanding their cultural differences. And there are major cultural differences with the Arab Muslim world. And, he, and it's not just here anymore. They're bringing this culture everywhere they live. The radical Muslims in America, some of them might be Americanized, but some of them still have this Arab Muslim culture from, their, from, from the home country. So the world has to wake up. Our politicians seem to think that if we were nice, true, uh, correct, and they're totally wrong, and they're making life totally dangerous for all of you. So someone, called, someone commented last time when I did my scope say on Camp David why I, thought, why I said it was going to be a failure because of the cultural differences with the Arab Muslim world. And he said that I was generalizing. Lots of people around you know, thank you very much, GO11. The world is Israel Defender, 100%. I rest on that too, but I'm a, whole, I'm a firm believer God helps those who help themselves. So the Jewish people, we must help ourselves as well. It's not just relying on God, but understanding God will help us when we help ourselves and rely on Him. It's a two, we need, it's a package deal there. Oh man, I forgot my coat in my office. What a bummer. Um, so one guy said that I was, I was generalizing. I was generalizing of the cultural differences with the, Arab, with the Arab Muslim world. And my answer to that is no. Whoever said that, he is ignorant. And instead of wanting to learn that there are cultural differences in the world, every culture has its differences. Does every Muslim or Arab think that way when he grows up in the Arab Muslim world? Maybe not 100%, but that, is the, but that is the culture of the world. That is the culture of the politics as well. So yes, you very much can generalize about culture. Individuals within that culture can be different, but on a general level, on, on the cultural level, yes, there is. Faith without works is dead. Totally. Are you done with work for the rest of the day? Yes, I'm, well, I'm, not, I'm never done with work, but I'm going to go home, spend time with the kids, and do some more work later.
still deeply ingrained. What are you still deeply ingrained with? I, didn't, I missed your other comment. So guys, check out the beauty of Jerusalem. It's really, really beautiful. So again, I, I, anyone who knows me, who follows me, if you're following me on Periscope or Twitter or Facebook, you know I'm a positive guy. You know I believe in appreciation and gratitude. So, in everything there is what to be gratitude about. Like saying it's generalizing that middle finger is a Vazdan Raka. <laughs> Very good, Aaron. Culture, yes, be awesome. It's, yes, it's a beautiful day. So, um, what was I saying? Oh, gratitude. So I am saying thank you to President Obama for having his administration say that they will not withhold the U.S. veto and the U.N. Security Council. Uh, so, uh, one of the radical uh, So, oh, yo, boss, I'm not talking about every Muslim, and if you follow me, you know that I say individual Muslims are not the problem, but Islam is the problem. There is a big a strain within Islam, and even if it's only 15%, which some people like to say, that's hundreds of millions of radical Muslims, and they are a problem. And it's a problem that the moderate Muslim community doesn't have a strong enough voice to stand up to it. When they create a culture of hate, they need to reform. Yes, the Islam, Muslims have to reform their own religion. It is up to Muslims to not, not problem is not enough Muslims stand up to the horrors taking place in their own in the name of their own religion. Not enough Muslims do that. That's a problem. Um, and until they do that, we're all going to be suffering. You are unbelievable. Why am I unbelievable, Anne? Uh, I don't know. If that's. I hope that's a good thing, but <laughs> I don't know if it's a positive or a negative. Um, so anyway, I was saying thank you to Obama for withholds for saying unless you are white, we are racist. To have white. I don't know what you're referring to, Patty. Forgive me. Um, so first of all, again, thank you. I'm and people need to understand the idea of Islam being played. Yes, 100% people have to learn that. Thank you, have speaking to you. You got it and spread it. Please help me spread this word. Help me spread the truth so more and more people understand it. More and more people learn it because I like the way you talk. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yes, Islam means submission, 100%. Keep it. You, you got it. Folks, if you're not following me yet on Periscope, follow me to get the truth. I'm on Periscope. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Snapchat. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. You just search for my name, Avi Abelo, everywhere, and I will be there to help you share the truth and help you show the truth about Israel and the beauty of Israel to the world. I'm a huge believer, huge, huge believer that those who stand with Israel will be blessed. It's just so simple to understand and it is so easy to see. So I'm here for all of you to help you. So please contact me. If you have any questions, if you have any comments, follow me to be inspired. I try to inspire people about Israel every day. You got it, Shai and Shari. Shari. Truth will set you free. 100% truth will set you free, folks. Angie, connection gone. Sorry about that. All right, folks. I'm going to go try not to walk into any more poles. Pray for me too much. Thank you. I appreciate that. Pray for me too much. Amen. Whack a troll, whack a troll. Yes. And anyone who wants to see the beauty of Israel, follow tour guide Aaron. Tour guide Aaron. Fabulous periscopes to see the beauty of Israel. Thanks, La 425. You're awesome. You do inspire for sure. Definitely. You are very positive. You scared. Patty, I'm extremely positive. I'm bullish. I'm bullish about the future of Israel. Um, the world is going through scary times. I think anyone who connects with the truth, we will be able to help ourselves and make the future a better place. But yes, I think we're going through scary times. Beauty of Israel. I don't like when people lie and just get in on my, on my space. It's my scope. They want to, they want to talk. They want to comment. That's fine. When you just say straight out lies, the waterfall. Yeah, folks. Oh my God. I showed you the waterfall. It was awesome. Wasn't that awesome? I stand with Israel and I like Obama. I'm Italian. Hi. Okay, that's fine. Dear Lord, keep touching. Thank you so much, Premier. Aaron, great scope. Yes, guys. Janet, definitely. Follow Aaron. They are sad idiots. I don't know who you're referring to. Go, Bogart. All right, folks. Um, tomorrow is Friday. You know what Friday means for me? Friday means that the Sabbath is upon us. Friday night, I disconnect from technology. There is no scoping on the Sabbath. There is no technology. There is no smartphones. There is no computers. The Sabbath for religious Jews is family time and it's time in synagogue and praying and connecting with the Lord. So tomorrow, anyone who tunes in, you will have, hopefully if I have time, 
a Bible portion of the week before the Sabbath begins. So tune in to my Periscope tomorrow before the Sabbath begins. Look out and I'll give you some pearls of wisdom, universal messages from the Holy Bible. So good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Solange is awesome as well. Yeah, there are a number of great Israeli scopers. Definitely follow them all. And I try to give shout outs every once, once in a while for them. Um, I'm in China. Amazing, Anne. Thanks for being here from China. You're secular. Guys, anyone for hell, I'll, I'll say this again. I try to always say it. I respect everyone who respects me. I respect Christians. I respect Muslims. I respect Buddhists. I respect atheists. I believe this world we're all supposed to respect one another. That's what religion has brought about. Judaism does not teach that everyone has to be a Jew. Not at all. If someone says they want to be a Jew, we say you don't have to be a Jew. You can be a good person without being a Jew. So, we, we respect everyone. God put us all in this world, world to make a better place. The one difference between Judaism and Islam and Christianity is that Islam believes everyone must be Muslim and Christianity believes everyone must be Christian. Whether all Christians believe that is another thing. But we, I respect you. I respect you. Uh, even if you're an atheist, I respect you. You're put in this world too to make a difference. Each one of us, God was brought here to make the world a better place. And you could, as long as you believe in making the world a better place, then all the power to you. And respect me and I'll respect you. Friendly Aussie and Israel, wash cups. Yeah. You're Jewish by blood? Amazing. Come visit Israel. No, all Christians do not believe that. All right, thank you so much, treasure. All right, folks. So tomorrow, I believe in loving one another 100%. So uh, tomorrow, I'll have a universal message from the Bible, from the Bible portion of the week. Jesus dies, we can be saved. So I'll have to answer this. <laughs> um, in terms of Jesus, uh, Judaism believes that Jesus was a Jew, right? Jesus was born a Jew. He was a Jewish teacher. He then died a Jew. Christianity was was developed by his disciples after he was after he was killed. Um, so Jews don't believe in Jesus as the Messiah. You were there, and you something amazing. We don't believe he was the Messiah. We believe he was a Jew who was killed. And one day the Messiah, the still Messiah still hasn't come. So that's, but I don't like getting into arguments about Jesus because you're not going to convince me and I'm not going to convince you. One day when the Messiah comes, we'll find out who was right. That's the best way to deal with it. In the meantime, let's all work together to make the world a better place. So folks, shalom from beautiful Jerusalem. Shalom, shalom. Thank you, Janet. Thank you so, so much. All the best. All the best. And anyone who's coming to Israel, let me know. We'll meet up. Take care, folks.